Hey guys, I hope all is well. I am back in the new and improved Diablo 4 in Season 4 with an off-meta rogue build here for you today. And this time, I'm running a pure fizz rapid-fire rogue, boasting a whopping 1000 crit damage to boot, leading to some pretty respectable damage. With the launch of Season 4, there have been a plethora of changes including a new unique ring for the rogue by the name of Scoundrel's Kiss. The most important thing to note about this ring is that it gives plus 3 to rapid fire and has a unique effect that causes rapid rapid fire to fire lobs of exploding arrows that deal multiplicative damage. My initial thoughts upon using the ring was that it's basically rapid fire on steroids. You no longer need an AoE skill because these lobs, as ambiguous as that word is, cause your rapid fire projectiles not to fire in a straight line but instead it kind of vomits these projectiles as an AoE explosion on the ground wherever you target. It honestly took a little getting used to because the projectiles kind of fire a little farther than where you you aim so I had to adjust to that and kind of aim slightly before where the enemy is going to be. And if you have an enemy highlighted when firing the skill then the projectiles kind of follow that enemy where it moves but it's kind of janky and weird at times. I can honestly say though that it's quite worth dealing with the drawbacks because the amount of raw damage now coming from rapid fire feels pretty damn good. Before I move on, I would like to just say please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos, and please give me some feedback on this one and what kind of build you would like to see in the future. As far as playstyle goes, I am using combo points because of the insane damage output due to the new changes as I'll discuss soon. I hit with puncture first, then pop rapid fire, and it absolutely disintegrates and decimates and annihilates. I drop poison trap for knockdown as a defense and I throw smoke grenades for dazing as a defense as well. And of course I'm dashing around as needed and lastly because of how insane rapid fire is what's better than casting it once is having a Kage Bunshin no Jutsu shadow clone cast it every single time you cast it causing your damage to almost double which is absolutely amazing for taking down bosses. Alright so there's a couple new updates to gear crafting in season 4. Yellow gear will now only roll a maximum of two affixes and legendaries will always roll three. With that being said, I pretty much salvaged or sold every single yellow gear in world tier 4 because optimal gear will have the most amount of affixes and that can't be achieved with yellow gear. This means you should always be checking the affixes on your legendaries for ones that you want. Secondly, you can now temper gear and depending on the item power you add up to 2 additional affixes for a total of up to 5 affixes. You roll 3 and craft 2. The new affixes have their own tiers which can be upgraded by randomly finding tempering manuals on the ground ground which will upgrade them. Third, after completing a tier 46 nightmare dungeon and doing one run of the pit of artificer in Saragar, you now can masterwork gear that's been tempered, which will upgrade the affix values on that gear by 5% per masterwork level, and one random affix will go up by 25% every four masterwork levels. This also includes affixes that you've crafted as I'll show you on my gear in just a sec. Just be warned that the starting monster level in the pit is level 100. Fourth, all Aspects that you salvage will now be stored in your codex instead of being itemized, and you can enchant your gear with that aspect infinitely. You unlock higher tiers of an aspect by salvaging higher tiers of that aspect. And lastly, gem crafting has gotten insanely more expensive and difficult. The highest quality royal costing 1 mil gold and 10k gem fragments per gem. So, those are pretty much all the major updates on gear. With that being said, let me show you what I've got going on. So, since we are are relying on combo points and rapid fire, you'll see on my gear that I tried to craft as much of that as possible through tempering and upgrading it through masterworking. The new combo point affixes give us so much extra damage that I thought I had to go for it. And the chance for rapid fire to cast twice pretty much doubles our damage. Other than that, I focused on life, armor, and resistances on my armor and jewels. On my armor, I've also opted to get chance to freeze and stun through tempering because it definitely comes in handy for crowd controlling mobs and for staggering bosses more quickly. And I focused on crit damage on my weapons and jewels as well. I did get a bit of cooldown reduction on my helm and I've crafted trapped cooldown reduction on my jewelry. 
All just so I can cast my poison trap more often and stagger bosses more quickly. As far as unique items go, as I've stated before, I am running Scoundrel's Kiss because our build is revolved around rapid fire. For my gloves, I am running Grasp of the Shadow because it not only gives me plus 4 to my rapid fire, but it also increases my shadow clone damage and has a decent chance to spawn a second shadow clone for one attack. If that attack happens to be rapid fire, then that's a lot of extra damage. Especially with the ulti going off, you can have at least three shadow clones going on. All casting rapid fire and doing millions of damage. And lastly, since we are running combo points, I thought it opportune to use a condemnation, which gives us multiplicative combo point damage and boosts our crit damage, rapid fire damage, and even gives our puncture extra attack speed. It's literally the perfect combo point item. I will say real quick that I got pretty unlucky with the level 4 masterwork on all three of my unique items because the boosts on my dagger and ring aren't that useful and getting a boost to the other affixes like crit damage plus the core skills and plus the crit chance or rapid fire would have been way better. It is pretty costly to reset the masterwork and start from scratch as it costs 5 mil gold to reset. So once I get around to having some more money I'm definitely planning on re-rolling the 25% boost. On my amulet and ring I got really lucky and got a 25% boost to combo points and on my crossbow and sword I got a 25% boost for rapid fire to cast twice and if my calculations are correct I have a total of 655.8% increased damage if I spend 3 combo points but since my dagger boosts that multiplicatively by 38% that comes out to just over 900% increased damage when I spend 3 combo points which is absolutely absurd and adding up my chances to cast rapid fire a second time that comes out to about 68% which is definitely respectable. For my aspects I'm running 3 offensive, 3 defensive and 2 utility aspects. For my offensive aspects I'm running edge master on my crossbow because we have a very good energy sustain and crossbows will double that roll so that's some pretty good damage. Expectant on my ring to boost our core damage after casting a basic which synergizes perfectly with combo points and retribution on my sword because we're constantly stunning and knocking down enemies. For my defenses I'm running disobedience on my amulet for that massive quick boost in armor, umbris on my legs for the free dark shrouds whenever I crit, and might on my helm for the free damage reduction when I cast my basic. Lastly, for my utility, I'm running explosive verve on my chest to treat my smoke grenades as a trap skill, just so I can take advantage of my damage boost to trapped enemies on my paragon, and audacity on my boots for the guaranteed stun when in the middle of a pack of enemies. So my skill tree is pretty straightforward. I just get puncture, maxed out rapid fire, get dash, get poison trap, and smoke smoke grenade, skip the imbuements, get my ulti, and go with precision since we are using a marksman ability as our primary source of damage. Then I just pick up the little nodes along the way to increase our damage and survivability. Lastly for my paragon board I put chip in the starter board since we are pure fizz and on my second board I go cunning stratagem for that sweet combo point boost which in this case adds arrows to my rapid fire which is huge for our damage. I also socket pride for the multiplicative fizz damage boost. On my third board I go ambush for that boost to crit damage against enemies affected by my poison trap and also my stun grenades thanks to the explosive verve as I've mentioned before. On my fourth board I go exploit weakness for that times damage boost against vulnerable enemies. I socket combat here because it's a prime intelligence board and thanks to that I get a massive plus 194% crit damage at glyph level 21. On my fifth board I go tricks of the trade just for havoc and here I socket ambush for that times damage boost against trapped enemies. And last but not least on my sixth and final board I go cheap shot for that times damage against crowd controlled enemies and here I socket control for an even further times damage boost to frozen or stunned enemies and to staggered bosses. Not to mention the added crit damage against crowd controlled enemies as well. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the tier 100 nightmare dungeon. I did die twice because I wasn't careful enough but nonetheless the build is certainly more than capable of handling a tier 100 nightmare dungeon and running them pretty comfortably. I will leave you with a showcase of the very frustrating tormented uber and Dario kill and thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.